In this review, we will have a look at Spell Force 3, a game that came out in 2017. It's a real-time strategy RPG. I think on a first note, I it's hard for me to put into words how much I actually enjoyed this game. I I enjoyed it. I spent about 60 hours playing it, which is, includes the main campaign, which took me around 45 hours and 15 hours in post campaign content. Every hour was treasured. I, I felt my time was spent well, even though I clocked 60 hours, it feels like I did it all in one setting. I was always excited to boot up uh, Spell Force again and give it another go. I think I think we can begin with a bit about the story of Spell Force. Uh, you basically play as a hero called Taha. You can select his first name. So you, you as Taha, soon find a party. You begin as an individual, and then as you progress through the storyline, you will pick up new characters and heroes and heroines throughout. Eventually, you will amass about. 10 I think in total of which you can have four active at one time so it's very much a quest about trying to determine the cause of some sort of disease that's ravaging villages and towns called the blood burn you seek after the the cure to this which leads you down a path and there are a few surprises and there is um, an interesting reason behind this disease that you'll find out and how this and just how the storyline is shaped and how it progresses i won't spoil too much about that um and that and the story it was it was it was decent i it's not the best story i've ever had in a video game nor the worst i'd say it's, it's satisfactory and and fortunately fortunately i I was well aware of the story as I played through. Sometimes in games I can just tend to ignore the story or let it fly over my head, but this time it really stuck out. It was clearly communicated through the in-game text, through the character dialogues and so on. I think that what is really great is the diversity in terms of the skill tree. Each of the characters you'll have in your party has unique skills that can be upgraded as you gain experience and progress further. These skills can be very helpful in battles um, and it depends what you sort of choose. Some skills can be good at crowd control and other skills good at individual combat. Crowd control is, as the name suggests, that you can sort of deal large damage or, or damage to a large number of enemies single con single um, single combat skills often like give you an advantage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with one enemy and these will and, and what's really great is that uh, the more you play and the more you get the feel for your characters in your party the more you will know how to use them to use their skills I, for example, enjoyed using the fireball for crowd control. I had a heavy attack for individual combat. I actually had two fireball skills active at once in two different heal, um, heroes, and it felt really satisfying as I learned to chain these appropriately to give me the advantage in combat. I also played the game on hard, which is um, quite a challenge, and that and that's one of the one of the annoyances I had with um well as as even though this game is one of my favorites i've ever played and that i will highly recommend at the end of this review it still has its a few of its flaws we can touch on just two of them briefly i think the main issue is that you will produce armies and create armies in this game with a number of troops you have a maximum population level of 200 which can be roughly around 100 troops active or so at one time the problem is when you play spell force on hard difficulty as i did you will have to maximize and be very efficient with the way you use your troops and the way you procure your resources so if you are unfamiliar you basically it's a base build part of spell force is base building so you will have control over a base in which you build various structures that procure resources like 
food, wood, stone, and iron. And some of these will depend on the race you select. And the more you build, the, the more you procure resources, the greater number of troops you can um, produce, and the greater or the more skilled troops you can produce, and the more structures you can build to your benefit. So when you play uh, on hard difficulty, you really have to maximize this and be very resourceful and very efficient. If you are not, especially on hard difficulty, you will be slammed by the, the AI, which gave me a great challenge, but it also became came as an annoyance in time times when I couldn't split my army sufficiently, so I couldn't have, say, Army A take the point at top at the top of the map and army B take the point at the bottom of the map. You can select all your troops at once, uh, which is far easier to move, move them around, but then they're just one big army. Um, but yet the computer doesn't um, struggle with this. It can also split its armies into different sectors, different units, and then attack different points on the map, which gives the computer an, an immediate advantage. Another thing I would have liked much more in Spell Force, and I think would have made it even more great, is that there are no cutscenes. Cutscenes would have been amazing, you know, um, Warcraft-like cutscenes would have been fantastic. The cinematics, but these are not included. But it's not a, it's not a train smash, you can look past that just because, well I could look past it because the game was so great in other aspects too. The voice acting is really great, and, and all the characters are voice acted separately, and the voice and the voices are very distinct and clear. There, there's no real negatives to the voice acting. There was one or two moments where the tone sort of was inconsistent, but beyond that, everything's pretty much perfect. And also through the voice text and the voice dialogue is that you learn a lot about Spellforce, the world, and especially the background of your characters. You will have a main base around which, from which you traverse the world and you visit your base often. And now I'm talking in the single player campaign. And there's always the option to um, speak to your, your fellow party members and actually learn a lot about their background and history which just fleshes out the characters and really builds a deep sort of provides quite a bit of content about the characters so you care about them a bit more than you would if they're just sort of cardboard cutouts. I think that the base building is also really good. It's like there's a number of structures but they're not too many and not too few. Not too many that you'll become confused and and become slowed down as you play against the computer and there's a various sort of soldiers you can train from foot soldiers and archers to or depending on the race you and as speaking of races there are various races so you obviously have your orcs your humans your dark elves elves trolls and several others i can't quite recall off the top of my head but you'll come across these in the game Especially in enemy variety is quite um, quite strong. You'll ha you, you obviously have those various races and their various soldiers and foot soldiers and archers and so on. But you also have like NPC or world NPC enemies like um, the undead, various dragons, golems, spiders, or wolves in the wild, bears, and all sort of different enemy creatures that you will come across in the campaign things like trolls and flesh eaters and so on when it comes to arm and weapons there is quite a variety um, I sort of maxed out my armor and my weapons in the game but there is quite a lot to choose from especially for your four party characters your, I had one archer I had a heavy infantry guy up front I had a mage and a dual wielder, uh, dual wheel, um, wielder character each has unique we weapons and each can be upgraded as you find new weapons in the world or you buy them from NPCs and merchants there's a lot of customization here with even trinkets and not only weapons but also armor you'll have various armor from helmets to body plates to plates to to um, 
other trinkets that can just give your character boons like extra health or extra willpower. You'll also be able to, alongside your skill tree, upgrade your stats of your character, which 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 will get points to allocate to things like strength, intelligence, willpower, dexterity, and so on. And each character will uh, specialize in one of those traits. So if you have a dual weeding, wielding um, character, you will want to put sta um, put points into your dexterity tree. If you want uh, a two-handed warrior, you can put into his strength. You can upgrade their health by putting points into constitution and so on. But what's also very attractive, attractive is the after campaign content where or the in-game content where you can continue to play along the maps you unlocked during the game but that also provide new scenarios and new quests it's not quite as fleshed out as the main campaign but it's there to keep you going and you can just continue upgrading your hero playing the computer playing online even and there's just so much here to keep you going after the campaign that I spent countless, well not countless, but many hours just keeping on going. And Spellforce 3 is just one title in the series, there are several others. I think there's two other main games and I just enjoyed Spellforce 3 so much that I can't wait but to get my hands on these other titles and just continue the experience. Um, I think in conclusion Spellforce 3 is a very good game. I think it's really worth the price and the uh, is worth buying and I can highly recommend it.